Okay, chapter three is exponential and logarithmic functions. We will continue our, discuss, our discussion of functions with a focus on these two, exponential functions and its inverse, the logarithmic function. You should have already read textbook pages 158 to the top of 161. And what we have on the front page of our notes is a summary of the important information about exponential functions. First, what is an exponential function? An exponential function is called a transcendental function and is f of x equals a, b to the x power. In an exponential function, the variable is within the power. Our variable x can be any real number. a is a real number constant, but a cannot equal zero. If a is equal to zero, then we have a horizontal line, y equals zero, which is not exponential. Okay, b is also a real number constant, and b cannot equal one. If b would happen to equal one, one to any power is one, and we are back to a, a linear function. Okay, so x is a power, it can be any number. a is a constant, cannot be zero, and b cannot be the number one. It is the base of the exponent. Exponential com functions come in two forms. They either represent ex exponential growth or they will represent exponential decay. Okay, exponents that represent growth increase as you move from left to right and exponents that represent decay decrease as you move from left to right. So you can see two basic exponential functions. In addition to analyzing the graphs, we can focus on domain, range, intercepts, and behavior, horizontal asymptotes, and whether they are continuous. All exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote, and in the parent function, the horizontal asymptote always lies at y equals zero and can shift up or down depending on where the graph shifts. Now, the base of an exponential function can be any number, Okay, one number that we use most commonly is called the natural base. Okay, the natural base is an irrational number e, which is approximately equal to 2.7. And so f of x equals e to the x power. It's the natural base exponential form most commonly seen in real world applications. Now we're going to take this information and we are going to uh, graph exponential functions. So go ahead and turn the page when you are ready. Okay. Now types of examples we can see when it comes to exponential functions. First you could be asked to evaluate a function. In this case we're going to evaluate using a calculator. So go ahead and take out your scientific calculators. Let's make sure you understand how to use it. Okay, The carrot button is the key that represents the exponent. So in letter A, I have 100 to the radical 2 power. So I'm going to type in 100. When I choose the caret button, that's the number then that follows is the number in the power. And the number that follows is square root 2. So I'm going to go second, hit the square root button, 2, close my parentheses, and hit equal to. I get the number 673.6. Since we do not tell you how to round, you can round however you wish. Most commonly seen is either to the hundreds or the thousands. So I'm actually going to round to the hundreds, which is two decimal places. So that's 673.64. The number that follows the three is larger than five, so we round the three up to four. A letter B, we have E. When no power is given, that means it is to the first power. So this is e to the first power. Okay. On your calculator, there's a button, ln. That represents the natural log. Just above the natural log is e to the x power. Those are inverses of each other, which is why are they, they are combined as a single button. Okay, we need to hit second so we can get e to our power. So notice the caret button already appears for us. Our power is 1. Close our parentheses. And it's approximately 2.72. I would like you to try letter C. 
and round e to the negative 0.78 power to the nearest hundredths. Next, we are going to graph the following exponential functions. Okay, anytime we graph, I recommend making a t-chart and we can choose values for x and we will get values for y in return. The domain of exponential functions is all real numbers, so I can choose any value that I wish for x. And typically, I choose some positive numbers, 0, and some negative numbers. So I could start with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, you're going to have a four function calculator, so you're going to have to calculate some of these exponents without using your calculator. Okay, we're going to start with negative three, so I'm going to plug in two to the negative third power. To make a negative exponent positive, we're going to move it to the denominator, so this is equal to one divided by two to the third power. Now two to the third power is two times two times two, which is eight. So this is equal to 1 eighth. Next I'm going to plug in negative 2. So 2 to the negative second power. I need to rewrite that so that I have a positive power and I'll do so by moving 2 to the negative second power to the denominator and which will become 2 to the second power. 2 squared is 4. So 2 to the negative second power is equal to the fraction 1 fourth. Next, I'm going to plug in negative 1. So I have 2 to the negative first power. Make the negative exponent positive by moving it to the denominator. 1 divided by 2 to the first power is 1 half. So when I plug in negative 1, I get 1 half. Any number to the zero power is one. So two to the zero power, one. Two to the first power is two. Two squared is four. Two to the third power is two times two times two, which is eight. Okay, all parent functions have horizontal asymptotes at y equals zero. So I am going to go ahead and draw in my horizontal asymptote and then I will go back through and plot my points. Okay. So I have negative 3, 1 8, negative 2, 1 4th, negative 1 a half, 0 1, 1 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. And we can see that this takes the shape of an exponential function that has exponential growth. Okay. The domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, the range is 0 to infinity. Since there is a horizontal asymptote at 0, we use parentheses because it is not included. Okay, next, problem number 4. Okay, we are going to describe the translation. Now, we did not talk about transformation this year as it is no longer a state standard, so we do not need to describe the translation. All we have to do is graph the function. Now, it is necessary to determine if there is a shift up or down, which would change the horizontal asymptote, and that occurs if there is a plus or minus following the exponent, and in this case, there's not. Therefore, the horizontal asymptote will fall at y equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in my picture. Once again, I'm going to plug in some values for x. Okay, I'm going to go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And this time I have negative 2 raised to the x power. So if I plug in negative 3 for x, I get negative 2. 
raised to the negative third power. And to make a negative exponent positive, I move that to the denominator. So this is 1 divided by negative 2 to the third power. Keep in mind, negative 2 is not in parentheses. Therefore, I need to calculate 2 to the third power first and then apply the negative. So this is equal to 1 divided by 2 to the third power is 8, and then I include the negative. So this is negative 1 8. Okay, next, I'm going to plug in negative 2. So I have negative 2 to the negative second power. So 1 divided by, make the negative power positive, so I have negative 2 squared. Again, we have to complete the exponent first because the negative 2 is not in parentheses. So I have 1 divided by 2 squared is 4, then I include the negative. So when I plug in negative 2, I get negative 1 fourth. Okay, and plug in negative 1, so I have negative 2 to the negative first power becomes 1 divided by negative 2 to the first power, which is equal to negative 1 half. Anytime we plug in 0, we get 1. So I have negative 2 to the 0 power. And remember, the negative 2 is not in parentheses with the exponent on the outside. So I have to complete the exponent first. 2 to the 0 power is 1. So this is equal to a negative 1. Okay. Plug in 1, I have negative 2 to the first power. 2 to the first power is 2, so that's negative 2. I have negative 2 raised to the second power. 2 squared is 4. Okay, include the negative. So when I plug in 2 for x, I get negative 4 for y. So when I plug in 3 for x, I'm going to get negative 8 for y. Plot your points. I have negative 3, negative 1 eighth negative 2, negative 1 fourth, negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 4, and 3, negative 8. So this graph has been reflected across the x-axis, which is why there is a negative in front. The domain of all exponential functions is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, the range for this function is negative infinity to zero, and I put parentheses around the zero because it is not included due to the horizontal asymptote. Very good. All right, when you're ready, turn the page. In problem number 5, we have f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1 power plus 3. Again, we do not have to describe the transformation, but what we need to take note of is that after the power, I have a plus 3. What this means is that the graph of the exponent has been shifted up 3 units, so that is going to change the location of my horizontal asymptote, where it should be at y equals 0. Because the graph shifts up 3, the horizontal asymptote also shifts up 3 and is now located at y equals 3. So we shift this graph up 3 units, including the horizontal asymptote. All right, I still need to plug in some values for x and solve for y. Okay. Say I choose negative 3. So we have 2 to the negative 3 plus 1 power. So what I have is 2 to the negative second power plus 3. Now to make my negative power positive, I move it to the denominator, so this is 1 divided by 
2 squared plus 3. 1 divided by 2 squared is 1 fourth. So 1 fourth plus 3 is 3 and 1 fourth. Now I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper so that I can show some work off to the side to come up with some of my, my x and y values. Okay, so next I'm going to plug in negative 2. I plug in negative 2 for x, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I have 2 to the negative first power plus 3. To change my negative exponent to be positive, I move it to the denominator. So that's 1 over 2 to the first plus 3. 1 over 2 to the first is 1 half, and 1 half plus 3 is 3 and 1 half. Next I can plug in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So I have 2 to the 0 power plus 3. Any number to the 0 power is 1. And 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Next I can plug in negative 2. I'm sorry, how about 0? Okay, if I plug in 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. So I have 2 to the first power plus 3. That's 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. So when I plug in 0, my y value is 5. Next I can plug in 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have 2 squared plus 3. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. I'm going to stop there because if I go any uh, number larger than 1, it's not going to fall on my graph. So now I'm going to plot negative 3, 3 and 1 fourth, negative 2, 3 and a half, negative 1, 4, 0, 5, 1, 7. I have a pretty good idea of what this graph looks like. My domain, all real numbers. True for all exponential functions. Okay, my range begins at my horizontal asymptote at 3 with parentheses because it cannot be 3 and goes from 3 to infinity. Very good. Okay, I'm going to give you an opportunity to try number 6, number 7, and number 8. After you complete numbers 6, 7, and 8, I want you to check your answers with the answer key provided in the Canvas module. Good luck!